Okay, so what I want you to do first is picture two people that are exactly the same, but who complain about probably this lot of stuff that you're doing now, self-control, discipline, willpower, but who complain about binge eating after work, not feeling in control with the food at all. Now what we're gonna do, we're not gonna change each of them as a person, we're simply gonna alter their environment. So we're gonna get one of the people, and we're gonna simply identify as what foods they kind of stop eating once they start, that binge or trigger foods. This may be one, we're gonna take that out of their environment, primarily home or work. We're going to use stimulus control, it's called, in regard to their environment, and that's controlling what's in plain view, or especially what's in reach and distance, alcohol, high calorie food, because we're more likely to get what's in reach and distance they've seen. What we're gonna do with that person, we're gonna get the people around them on board. The partner's not gonna bring home high calorie food or order takeaway. They're gonna be on the plan with them and they're gonna, we're gonna authorize our friends or family or partners, kids even, to slap the high calorie food out of it if we're going over in our calories or whatever it is. And remind us about a goal along the way to have that support network. At the same time, we, we limit the high calorie trigger food we look at our food environment and fill it with low calorie, healthy, proteins, veg. We might prep our meals, we might get a meal prep company. We may um, order our groceries online, whatever we need to do to exert less willpower in our environment. Now, who do you think is more likely to get unbelievable results? It's obviously the person who we change the environment. So what we need to do first is not stress about our self-control, etc., and more look at power of the influence our environment's having on us at this current moment and then we're going to try change it the same way if i wanted to be more productive with um doing work instead of just trying not to go on my phone not to go on instagram and facebook i'm going to proactively control that and i put app blocking software in there i put it in a time lock box whatever i need to do that in itself is going to help so essentially what we're trying to do is make our good habits easy to do and our bad habits hard to do so Ask yourself first of all when it comes to food, what are your food trigger foods? What can you not just have one of? For me, it's Tim Tams. And we wanna maybe limit those in our environment and instead put more lower calorie healthy foods in there. Same goes for drink, okay? If alcohol is in plain view, a lot of time we're just gonna have it for the sake of it. So instead of that, we might swap that out for jugs of water, lower calorie, maybe even zero calorie drinks, etc. Have that ready. For some, they prefer bottled water in the fridge. You might just fill up as you go. Low calorie snacks, celeries, carrots, etc., etc. Stuff that we talked about in the nutrition section. Now ask yourself as well, ask, are the people around you, are they on board with your plan? Are they helping or hindering you? We need to first tell them how important that goal is to us. Um, now I know it may be embarrassing because we've tried to do this many times before and failed, but this will be the time you succeed, trust me. You have to trust the process. This means absolutely everyone around you as well. There may be people, if you're in work, that want to sabotage you because they can't do it. Um, but there's no point controlling our environment if our partner's ordering Uber Eats or bringing home their binge food that we end up eating or finishing. If that does happen, they need to A, not bring it home, or B, if they do bring it home, they need to lock it away in a lock cupboard or hide it from you. It sounds extreme, but our brains are program to go for really high calorie foods it will seek it out and eat it that's all that's going to happen you may also give them the authority to slap the food out of you or remind you of your plan along the way it's probably best to authorize them first same goes for your friends when eating out etc there's no point then peer pressuring you into drinking more or eating more food make sure they're aware of your plan so they can help work friends the same way tell them not to offer you food control what's at your desk for some clients the kitchen um, an office is terrible for staying on track. There is, there's always high calorie food everywhere. So may we may have to create the effort just to not go in there. Not having high calorie food eyesight, like I said, sometimes not having even high calorie food in the house. I know if it's in my house, I'll eat it. If it's not, I probably won't. Not having alcohol in plain sight, like I said. Sometimes I'll just have a glass of wine for the sake of it. Not like there's nothing wrong, but it's I didn't want it. I just had it because it was there. The lock box, like I said, the food lock box for your parent or your kids, okay? I can handle a bit more high calorie stuff, so I do that with Louise. Keep your kitchen tidy and clean. This is a bit extra. Reachers are shown that messy kitchens are associated with poor eating habits. And more out of control eating, which is interesting. Some of this is thought to be due to this, that stress as well. Interesting. That's going to add to our stressful day that we can look at as well. Stress is a stimulus for comfort eating for most people. Also, if your kitchen is messy, you feel more overwhelming or difficult to take the time to make a healthy meal. 
and then we might just say stuff it we might just grab some more convenience so we want to make sure um we're creating an environment to make the good habits easy to do like we said before and lastly reduce the available food choices too many food choices has been seen to maybe create a sense of decision fatigue and overeat so try not to have the cupboards overflowing with foods just have the stuff we're going to have so if we kind of get a basic structure about what we eat on a monday to friday basis at least we can take that meal plan or meal structure and then that will be a um food shopping list instead of just buying heaps of random shit and then we're just going to more than likely to overeat as we said use that control what's in plain view with the, the low calorie stuff the water etc and then you can see how much we've set ourselves up for success before we've even changed anything so it's kind of like that thing when you surround yourself with successful people you'll become successful when you surround yourself with a successful environment you're going to become successful as well that's the absolute first step especially in today's age where this high calorie food is everywhere not saying we can never have it but we want to limit it in that moderation so if we're to buy it we may only buy the exact portion we're going to have we're not going to buy more of it because that's going to end up as a disaster take these tips do a little audit first of all on your environment and let's make the process as easy as possible okay to set us up for success